Well, hello, ladies and gents, and welcome back once again to another delightfully delicious episode of Andy Mancam's Garage. Today, I'm going to be balancing the throttle bodies on this Yamaha FZ1N with the very trick-looking e-sync tool from Heeltech. This is a professional throttle body sync tool with USB interface to plug into your PC. Grab yourself a cuppa and let's get on with balancing my bike. Now in the almost two years that I've had this bike, I found it to run very smoothly. But just recently I've noticed a little bit of an extra buzz creeping in. Now whereas this buzz could be the fault of dodgy fuel or worn parts, old age, or maybe even the dreaded valve clearance which is just about due. But it could also potentially be down to the throttle bodies being out of sync with each other. Now a lot of people falsely believe that with electric fuel injection and the removal of a carburetor from the system meant that the need to balance the throttle bodies was also eliminated. But I'm afraid that's not true, because when we're balancing the throttle bodies, what we're actually balancing is the amount of vacuum created by the throttle body, and therefore the amount of air that it's sucking in to mix with the fuel. And it doesn't matter if the fuel being thrown into the cylinders of the bike is being done by a carburetor, by electric fuel injection, or by the power of goodwill and fairy dust. It still needs air, and the amount of that air is controlled by the throttle bodies in here, and those four throttle bodies can actually get out of sync with each other cause the engine to buzz a little bit because it's running slightly out of balance. What we need to do is to take our tasty little Heeltech e-sync tool and connect these four pipes, one to each throttle body, one of which has a little offshoot because that needs to go to the manifold air pressure sensor, run the engine, and then pressure sensors inside here will give us a readout which we'll then see on our PC screen to show us how out of sync and how much we need to adjust the individual throttle bodies. And then also for twin cylinder bikes where the cylinders are a lot further apart, for example, BMW boxer engines, there's two extension pipes so you can get a little bit more reach to your throttle bodies. Also in here is two little packets of threaded adapters. So just in case the nipples, <laughs> you said nipple, on your throttle bodies aren't quite the right size, you can screw these adapters in instead and you'll have exactly the right size mounting point to stick the hoses from the e-sync tool onto. And there are two packets in there, one with an M5 thread, one with an M6 thread, so hopefully pretty much all bikes should be covered. And naturally there's the obligatory Heeltech stickers. And what I'm seeing here already is that I could potentially wrestle my way keyhole style through to the bits that I need to reach and get this job done, but in order to make this a bit more enjoyable for you guys to watch, I'm gonna take the tank completely off to start with while I get everything set up. So now we can see a little bit better what we're dealing with, but to be honest, not a huge amount. So from what I can see, it looks like coming out of each throttle body, there are two hoses. You can actually see that a little better here from above. If I pull the fuel line and stuff out of the way, these hoses here, they're all connected up to the throttle bodies and they're all connected up to each other. Cylinder one to three, cylinder two to cylinder four by these blanked off connecty jobs. And then this three-way one here, actually comes off, connects into the bottom of the map sensor here, the manifold absolute pressure sensor. Just to make this even easier to see, I'm gonna take that plug off, move that out of the way. I'm gonna rotate this round out of the way as well. Yeah, so as I said, we need to be getting our mitts on, the hoses from cylinder one and cylinder three, which are connected together. So that's that one and this one. Yeah, so as you can see, that's just a completely blanked off peg to hold the hoses together, but there's no air passing between them. And this is where we're potentially going to have a bit of a problem because the hoses on the end of our e-sync tool are intended to pop onto some kind of a nipple. And obviously we've got just an ordinary end of a hose. And with better access, we could get right in there and poke this straight onto the nipple on the throttle body. But the problem is, we don't have better access, so, hmm, what to do? Well, one thing I could try is to take these M5 threaded nipply adapter jobbies. I can thread that onto the hose. There we go, that's screwed on nice and snug. We can try it like that, see if it does the trick. If not, I have to find some hose connectors. So that's the hoses from cylinders one and three nippled up. Now, obviously for this one, I've actually spliced my Scott Euler vacuum feed into it. So we need to go not from the join here, but instead we're bypassing out all of the potential reading, messing up hosage off to the, uh, the Scott Euler. And then take the plug off the other end from cylinder number four. Rest that over there to the side for now. Brass nipples onto those two hoses. So 
So there we go, we've got our four hoses with ends that we can now interface to for cylinders one to four. You also need this hose here off of the bottom of the map sensor. Yeah, that's that off. And obviously because this is now connected into the rest of these secondary hoses into the throttle bodies, we're going to need to plug that. Luckily in the hose, specially intended for going onto the map sensor, there is a steel plug, so we can use that to bung this hose and make sure that's not going to be upsetting with the running of the bike. Obviously on my particular bike, if this wasn't in the kit, I could have used one of these plugs, but it's handy that Heeltech's got that in there already. So now we can connect up our four hoses. I'm going to start from the right end with this first one, connect the black hose on, and take the small offshoot, connect that onto the map sensor. And the instruction manual, it recommends that you use the black hose for cylinder number one, but I've started on number four, obviously, just because of the proximity to the map sensor here, so I'm going to go backwards from there. So next comes cylinder number three with the green hose. Next along is cylinder number two with the red hose. And then last, but of course by no means least, cylinder number one, which is incredibly short here, with the yellow hose. And obviously it goes without saying that all bikes are a bit different, you might be able to just get easily straight onto your throttle bodies directly with the hose and not have to worry about these little extensions that the manufacturer may or may not have put in place for you. In my case, I've got pretty terrible access into the space under here, so these are quite handy. Right, with that done, obviously we need to reconnect up our electrics here. And also, another stage that needs to be taken care of is that this hose here is the intake or outtake, depending on which direction you look at it in, for the air injection system, or AIS, or on some bikes it's the, the pair system. And this injects fresh air from the airbox into the exhaust of the bike so that the unburnt fuel can be burnt off in the pipe. That's what causes all of the popping when you're on overrun on your bike. And this needs to be shut off so that once again this isn't messing around with our pressure readings. So this hose goes down through the frame, it pokes out here, and I need to pinch that closed. Now, as far as I know, if you've got your secondary air injection system already switched off or plugged off, then this stage you can probably skip. But mine is still connected, so... So what I've done is I've just used an adjustable spanner because it's got flat blades and it can't come undone just to clamp that hose shut. Which means that now we need to think about running the bike in order to get any kind of pressure readings out of this. And that means we need to put the tank back in place because otherwise we're not going to be getting any fuel into the engine. Right, we are good to go, but of course we're forgetting one important ingredient. In order for this little gadget to work, we need a computer. Luckily, here's one I prepared earlier. I've already downloaded the software from www.heeltech-electronics.com forward slash EST. Just scroll right down to the bottom. Here it is in the software section. Also here you can find details about it, how much it costs, what it works with, the user manual, which is also very important. So I just need to install this quickly. I say quickly, this is a very old Dell Windows tablet, so it seems to do everything quite slowly. Here we go. Install software. Yes, please. We're working with the eSync tool version 1.0.15.0. That's all done, so we are ready to run the software. And there we are, there's the software open. And it says currently that we are disconnected from our device. So let's take the crazy step of connecting this up to the PC. And of course, you need to have a computer relatively near to your bike in order to do this, but thankfully the cable is a good meter and a half long so if you've got a pc on a workbench or you don't want to balance your laptop on top of the bike and ultimately throw it on the floor you've got plenty of cable to make sure you can get to where your computer is thankfully i've got this handy little tablet so i can just plug that straight in over the bike and now it says that we are connected so at this point we need to have the bike up to operating temperature so I'm just gonna open the door a bit so i don't poison myself and start her up <laughs> Okay, so now we're at 93 degrees centigrade. So we're in the ballpark of the operating temperature. We click on the stopped button. This now says that we're measuring. And as you can see, it's giving us all sorts of readings as to what's going on. Now my tick over is supposed to be at between 1100 and 1300, and it's currently showing me that I'm just under 1400. So we need to bring that down a bit. The idle adjust screw here. Go gradually bring that down. I prefer to have it a bit higher than a bit lower, so we'll go at just under 1300. And now we can see here, these are our four bar charts relating to our four colored hoses. On my bike, the MRF Z1N, cylinder number three 
should be the reference cylinder, which in this case, because we've gone backwards, sorry to confuse things, is the second one, so the green one needs to be the reference. So what we do here, the section says reference, click that one. If you had a twin cylinder bike, the bar charts with nothing going on, you could just switch them off by turning off the unused channels like that. But we need those, so there we go. And the screen is now grey. When we adjust the throttle bodies, it'll go green. I need to take a long, thin, flathead screwdriver and reach in here to somehow get the adjusting screws. Just about see one of the screw thingies there being a mixture of the force and good luck. Just about managed to get the screwdriver on there. So that should be the yellow bar chart here because I'm on the first cylinder. Obviously, remember, I'm going backwards. If I try and turn that, you can see any difference happening here. As I'm turning that anti-clockwise now, the numbers are slowly climbing yellow bar is gradually getting taller. There we go, the yellow and the green are roughly about the same. Give that a couple of blips just to make it settle. I will go with that for now, see if I can reach the next screw. There, so now I've got the red one. It's again, turning that anti-clockwise, so they're about the same. I think I've actually gone a little bit too far, so I need to go back Clockwise again, a turn or two. So, now we come over this side, do the last one, the black one. Oh, you can see we're really getting close because the uh, screen's gone green. Funny, now that they're all much closer together, the tickover's really evened out. But as you can see, the red is once again a little bit too high. There go, they are now all pretty much about the same. I think that's about as good as we're gonna get it. Tick over has crept up though, so we'll bring that back down. Idle screw's really hot. Let me do this with gloves on. There we go, we're back at 1300 again. All of our graphs here look pretty much about the same height. Our bar graphs here are hovering around the same area. They're going roughly the same sort of numbers. So I think that's us balanced and we're getting a steady green background. Very nice. Yeah, that looks pretty solid. Oh, switch that off because we are now balanced. Now, of course, if you want to save the details of the uh, testing that you just did, do you need to put in here some name details, make of the bike, Model of the bike, year, mine's a 2006. Okay, save that, obviously if you're a professional doing this job for a client, you could put in all of the details, VIN number, license plate, mileage, all the other stuff. Uh, we also need to save workshop info, obviously again, I'm not professional, so I'm saved in here as AMC's garage, there we go. Located in the fair city of Hamburg. We can now save this file into our eSync folder that I've got in my documents there. So now that we've saved that little test there, what we can actually do is to open up from our hard drive at any point in the future. And then we can actually see as the whole process plays through, we've got 30 minutes of actual data here as I was messing going backwards and forwards. But what we can also do is to pause that video and we can actually take a screenshot of that. And there's a little icon here, camera with before written underneath it. We click that, the image is captured and then Touch screen on this tablet is awful. And then we can skip right to the end of the little video track here. Once we were finished with the messing and everything was balanced, and then we can pause that, click the after button, takes an after picture, it then presents us with the option to create a report. So if we click report, we want to save that. I'm just going to leave the file name that's presented to me there. FZ1 2006, blah, blah, blah. And now it's saved us a PDF of the data that we just collected giving us the numbers for all four of the cylinders, showing us how balanced we were at the beginning, what our graphs looked like at the beginning, and also how balanced we were at the end and what our graphs looked like at the end. Also, of course, very professionally with AMC's garage in Hamburg on there. And obviously any other information you would have saved would have also come up in this. So if you are, again, professional doing this for somebody else, you can give them this to show them exactly what you did and let them have all the numbers of their bike. So there we go, that is the Heeltech eSync tool. Awesome little piece of equipment and also a lot cleverer than the scope of this video can really let on because as you can see here, if I were to pause this, each of these graphs obviously refers to each of the cylinders which each has its own coloured hose and 
The graph shapes are all very slightly different, and apparently this has a relevance to the actual state of the engine, and the first draft of the manual for the e-sync tool sadly doesn't go into enough detail to cover this, but he'll take a working on it. Apparently one of the things it can tell you is that perhaps one of the cylinders, two of the cylinders, maybe even all of the cylinders, have a valve out of adjustment, and that could be causing these different shaped graphs. So there we have it, thanks to the Heeltech e-sync tool, the throttle bodies of my Yamaha FZ1 are now freshly balanced. Thank you so very much to Heeltech for sending me this little gadget to test out. I hope you guys have been as impressed with this little box of tricks as I have. It was easy to use, the bike is already idling noticeably better, and I'm looking forward to getting out on the road to see what kind of a difference it's made to the performance. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. If this video was interesting or entertaining for you, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down, but remember to tell me in the comments why you didn't like it. If you're not already, get yourself subscribed to the channel, and I will see you next time. Ta-ra!